TikTok is a phenomenal productivity app. I can organize my life with it, do a brain dump, take notes, build a reference library, and I've outlined my entire TikTok system, my entire workflow in my TikTok Power User course that I'll link in the description. However, TikTok is not perfect and I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything either. In fact, in this video, I'm sharing my top five biggest frustrations with the tool that could help you reconsider it if you're in the market for a productivity app. My first problem with TikTok is its design. While it is relatively intuitive, it just looks like it's stuck in the 2000s. Now you can customize it to a degree with font size, custom backgrounds, and a custom logo on mobile, but it comes nowhere near better designed apps like Asana, Todoist, or Meistertask. Now, I am not a designer, so I wish I had more constructive feedback to offer, and I can't really pinpoint what it is that they should improve upon. But perhaps studying some of these competitors will give them an idea, because they show it is possible to have both great design as well as good functionality. Now, TikTok functionality is amazing, but if they were to improve its design, nobody would beat it. My number two frustration with TikTok is its web clippers limitations. Now, TikTok is not alone here. It functions in a similar way to many other web clippers on the market in that you're visiting a web page, then you can use the web clipper plugin for your web browser to save that as a link into your TikTok inbox or wherever else you place it. Now, the good things are a couple. First of all, the link is formatted, so it saves the title of the page and it's a clickable link straight from within TikTok. That's pretty good. In fact, you can also select a string of text on a page and it will then turn that into the task title instead and retain the clickable URL. However, if we look at something like Evernote's Web Clipper and compare it, it just doesn't come close. With Evernote, you can save a web page's contents in many different ways. It can be a complete page safe. One thing I really loved always is the article mode, which strips any design and ads and retains the content, saves it as an Evernote note. And the thing is with TikTok, it has a note-taking functionality. So why can't it apply that to what I'm trying to save with the web clipper. In fact, its email add-on for Gmail does have this feature. If I use that to save an email into TickTick, it saves not just the title of the email, not just the subject line, but also the contents. So it is possible they're just not doing it. And I wish they would. I feel like that would be a major step up in its capturing functionality. My number three frustration is the lack of nested lists. This is one of those things that Todoist does a lot better than TikTok. And it's one of the things I really had to get used to when I moved from Todoist to TikTok. In Todoist, you can set up lists multiple levels deep. You can create your own hierarchy structure. And the cool thing is that every single list, no matter its place on the hierarchy, retains its functionality. In other words, whether it's on level one, the highest level, I can add tasks to that. With board view, I can separate it into different sections. And the very same is true for lists for levels down. Now, how is this useful, you may wonder? Well, for me, I found the need to create these nested lists based on the area of focus first, then perhaps a project, then perhaps what turns out to be a sub-project or, you know, a goal and then a project. There are many reasons why you may want to nest your lists in more than one level deep. With TikTok though, all you get is one level. And not only that, the first level isn't a list on its own, it's just a folder. So if you would want to have a list that is dedicated to a focus area, but may just be a general single item on its own, let's say you have a focus area dedicated to maintaining your house, and you just want to clean up one box that's sitting in your bedroom. Now, ideally, I would want to add that as a one-off task to that main list dedicated to that focus area. I don't have to make that a project or a separate list. However, in TikTok, I would need to do that. Now, the one workaround I found which sort of works is creating a singles or standalone actions list for each and every folder, but you do have to do it separately. And not only that, it doesn't recognize the main folder it belongs to. So if I'm trying to do quick association with a list when I capture something new in my inbox and I use the bracket pointing up to associate it, I would have 
8 lists with exactly the same name having no idea which is which unless I rename them manually which is something I did but there's just as you can tell so much working around a problem that I feel shouldn't be a problem in the first place. Now in the previous issue I already mentioned it to a degree which is quick associating an item perhaps something you just captured in the inbox you want to use the hotkeys to quickly move it to a list and again it works but you have to have workarounds if there are multiple lists with the same name. There's another issue though, which is if you've broken up your list into sections and perhaps you're using the Kanban board view for a more elaborate project, perhaps a sequential project and something came up and you want to add it there quickly. Well, bad luck because you're not going to be able to do it. By default, you can only associate an item with a list first even if you're dragging it into that list manually with your mouse it will by default end up in the very first section so if that is where it needs to end up i guess that's good but if you want to move it to another section you're always going to have to navigate to the list again and then manually move it drag it to the section you wanted it to end up in. And again, I'm mentioning to doist here because in there, that was not necessary. You can just quick associate it not only with a list, but also with a section within that list. No extra effort needed. Lastly, something I already just mentioned in the previous issue, sequential projects. It is something I am growing increasingly frustrated with the lack of sequential project support. And it is something I mentioned on a podcast episode I was a guest on just a couple of weeks ago, which is also available on my channel if you want to see the full conversation. A sequential project, to summarize, is an outcome that you're chasing with multiple steps that depend on each other. There is a certain sequence, there's an order in which they can be performed. It's not a list that you can tackle in random order. In other words, if I'm trying to complete a sequential project, I will need to know which action is available at this point in time. I cannot just attack it from any angle. I cannot just try and complete task number four when I haven't completed task number one yet even, let alone two and three. In many applications nowadays, such as ClickUp, Nirvana, or Asana, you can pre-configure a sequential project by setting up blockers and dependencies. You can, in other words, create a relationship between different tasks that say this task is blocked until the previous one is completed and vice versa. So you can create a chain. With TickTick, that's not possible at this point in time. Instead, I have to manually differentiate available tasks with the next tag. Then once it's complete, I have to go to its associated project, see if there are other tasks now available, mark them separately if I want to make that effort. If they are in the same context, I guess I can just skip that and perform them. But it's still so much extra work to check what is something I can do in the context I'm in at this point in time. And it's something I'm trying to move away from. I want to spend as little time in my to-do app as possible. The most time I spend in TickTick or any other app I would use is during my weekly review when I am planning ahead, when I'm setting up the projects I'm trying to attack and having that sequential project feature would be such a time saver. It would mean I would have to think even less about what's on my list and instead trust that it will show up even if I complete something else, the next thing just appears in whichever context I pre plan it to be. I can just shift between the contexts, select the one I'm in now and get going. Now, having said all this, I'm still using TickTick. There's also a lot to like about it. In fact, there's a lot more to like about it than there's to dislike about it. That's why I've been using it for over a year. And it's also why I have a full course on it that outlines my entire system. If you're not ready yet, if you're not convinced yet, I can imagine after watching this video, you can go to my other video, which explains my top five favorite features. And then you can be the judge if it's worth giving it a try.